My name is Judy. I'm a 40-year-old housewife. I live with my husband Jack, who is two years older than me, and with our cat. We have been married for 15 years now. If you ask me that if I have been completely satisfied with my marriage so far, I would say not really. That is partly because we were unable to have kids, and the other reason is that Jack works at a low salary job, and he doesn't help with the housework and spends his day off just hanging out at home. And what's more, Jack is a bit of a mama's boy, and even though he is in his 40s, he still wants to visit his parents-in-law's house, which is very close by. My mom is a lot more lonely now since my dad passed away. Jack makes excuses like that, but there's no way that his mom, Mary, is weak like that. She had no manners and also had a terrible personality. You know what? I was standing in line at the supermarket the other day and I farted, and it made a very loud noise. I was so embarrassed that I turned around and blamed it on the person behind me and said to that person, "It's so rude to fart." <laughs> Mary laughed as she told the story of what had happened while they were shopping, and Jack, who was listening, also laughed with her. But I was just disgusted and didn't want to be with them. I couldn't believe that Mary was my mother-in-law. Mary has only a few friends because of her character and personality, and she's the kind of person whose only hobby seems to be picking on her daughter-in-laws. I wouldn't have a hard time going to Mary's house if I had a good relationship with her, but no wife would want to be near a mother-in-law with a personality like that. My brother-in-law Phil and his wife Anna, who used to live together at Mary's house, also ran away because Anna also couldn't stand Mary. I mean, I can completely understand her. If my father-in-law was still alive, living with them may have been tolerable, but I wonder what kind of punishment it would be to live with only Mary. Unlike me, who argued back with my own opinions directly, Anna is a quiet and patient person. But even that quiet Anna wanted to get as far away from Mary as possible. So, what kind of abuse did she get from Mary, which made her want to get away like that? Phil, my brother-in-law, who is also a mama's boy like Jack, didn't want to move that far away. So now Mary, Phil, and Anna, and Jack and I are all living separately, but we all just live close by each other. Jack and Phil were both mama's boys. I don't know what's so good about a mother like Mary, but. I can still put up with Mary as long as we live in separate households. If Mary should ever ask me to live with her, I'll definitely reject it. I had firmly promised myself to do so. But when Mary called us over the other day, she had brought up the topic about living together. I've been thinking about it, and I think it's finally time for us to move in together. When can you move in? Suddenly, Mary had gathered us and Phil and Anna and started talking about moving in together. She made it sound like she had already decided to move in with us on her own, and I'm also surprised that she even jumped to discussing on when to move in together. Huh? Now wait a minute. I don't want to live together with you, Mary. I saw Anna go through a lot of hardships, and I don't want to go through the same thing. I am not asking you. I am asking Jack. Even though I firmly refused to live with her, Mary didn't listen to what I had to say at all. If we were to live together, I should be involved in the discussion too. But of course, she ignores my opinion. Well, I don't mind. I don't mind living together. It would be easier for you to take care of mom in the future if we all live together, right? Well, of course, Jack would agree to live together, and he did so on the premise that I would be the one taking care of Mary. Taking care of Mary? Me? Are you kidding me? Mary has been bullying Anna and I for years, and now you want me to take care of her? How could you even say that? I said it as I sighed, but Mary looked disappointed. Oh no. How could you accuse me like that? 
As an elder housewife who's much more experienced, I just gave you both some advice, that's all. How could she even think that what she was doing was giving some advice? In any case, I don't want to live with Mary or take care of her. If you really insist to live together, then we'll get a divorce. Jack got nervous hearing what I said. H hey, divorce over something like this, you're overreacting. Overreacting? Forcing someone to live with you or having to take care without asking about my own opinions are good reasons for a divorce. I have a job with a fixed income, so getting a divorce doesn't bother me at all. When I argued back, Jack got silent. Well then, it can't be helped. If Judy really doesn't want to do it, then I'll just have to ask Phil and Anna to come back. Now, it was Anna's turn to start panicking. No, I don't want to. If I have to live with Mary again, I'll go mental. I will never do it. But this time, Phil began to argue back. Now, now, calm down, Anna. My mom may have been a little hard on you in the past, but she did it for your sake. Mom is sorry for what she did. She's sorry? As far as I can see, Mary doesn't seem to be sorry at all. Yes, exactly. I mean, you never say anything back whenever I try to talk to you. There's no thrill in that. A strong-willed wife like Judy is a problem. But a wife who doesn't say anything is also a problem too, isn't it? That's right. You have things that you should reflect back on too, you know? What? Anna was absolutely mortified by Phil's unbelievable comment. I was also feeling the same as Anna as I was standing besides her, and I was just too stunned to say anything. Besides, Anna, you've become a housewife all your life, so if you get divorced, you'll be in trouble right away. It's not like you have a job like Judy. When Phil began to say that, Mary jumped into that conversation. Exactly. Anna, if you keep being selfish, Phil could leave you, you know? If a woman with neither good looks nor good style gets rejected, she'll have no choice but to go out on the street. What exactly is Mary sorry about? I seriously wondered. Mary was enjoying how this talk was going to, so she looked really excited. Anna, you were still pretty when you were young. Now, you're so chubby. Come to think of it, it's that time of season where sea lions begin to move around, right? <laughs> sea lions, huh? That's a good one. Even Phil burst out laughing. <gasps> How rude! Are you trying to call me a sea lion? Anna burst into tears and I tried to comfort her, but both Mary and Phil didn't stop talking. Oh no, stop being so paranoid. I was only talking about the sea lions, right, Phil? The sea lions flap their flippers and cry out, right? She's just like them. <laughs> to my surprise, both Phil and Mary began to imitate a sea lion together. P please stop. What is wrong with you people? I shouted, and Anna burst into tears and ran out of the house. I shouted over to Mary as I stood up to chase after Anna. How horrible and inconsiderate of you. That's why neither Anna nor I want to live with you. Then Jack joins in. You think you're all that because you're working, but after all, a woman trying to survive on her own is bound to end up on the street. Just like Anna, you'd be in trouble if you divorce me. Don't you dare even think of using divorce as a threat. He glares at me as he says this. It was true that I was in a better position than Anna, but I couldn't really say, yes, let's divorce right away. A anyways, I would never live with Mary, I said and ran out of the house. I decided to find Anna and comfort her. After searching around for a while, I found Anna walking along the sidewalk. Anna! Oh, Judy. Anna's face was filled with tears. 
I managed to calm Anna down and went into a nearby coffee shop. I can't take it anymore. Mary has been bullying me, and Phil doesn't help me at all. I agreed to what she had to say. Well, yeah. Phil and Jack are both mama's boys, aren't they? I sighed. If it's only light verbal abuse, then I can stand it, but I can't stand it anymore knowing that Phil is cheating on me too. And to think that even Mary is helping Phil have an affair? At Anna's sudden topic about Phil having an affair, I panicked. W w what Wait a minute. Huh? Phil's having an affair? And Mary's corporating? Oh, you had no idea? That man has been cheating on me for years. He kept on saying that he was going to visit Mary, but he was actually on a date with his mistress. Mary knew about it, and she was even helping him create an alibi. Anna was in tears, as if to vent all the feelings that had been building up inside her. I was so stunned and felt very bad for Anna. I pity her so much, being harassed by Mary, and even being cheated on by her own husband. I completely agree with how you're feeling about all this, Anna. I feel so sorry for you. But why did you even put up with it? No matter how worried you are about how you'd live in the future, you shouldn't have to put up with this kind of life. I thought I was cheering her up by saying this. But Anna looked up at me with curious eyes. What do you mean why am I putting up with it? Because it's the same for you, isn't it? Huh? Then Anna began to tell me an outrageous story. After hearing the whole story, Anna and I decided to team up and go against Mary and our husbands. They were all a bunch of assholes. There is no way they can mock Anna and I to this extent, and there is no way we both could remain silent about it. We will surely pay back for all that they've done to us. And one month after Anna and I's discussion, Mary ordered all of us to come over to her place again. Since then, Anna and I have been steadily making preparations without saying anything to our husbands. And this was the perfect opportunity. We all headed over to Mary's place. Well, I thought about it. And after all, either Phil's family or Jack's family would have to move in with me. Mary began to talk about the topic of moving in together once again. I'm getting old and eventually I'll have to have one of my daughter-in-laws take care of me, so I figured it's better to begin practicing now. To this, Anna answered right away. I don't want to live with you, Mary. I will never live with you. If we have to live together, then I'll get a divorce. Anna's tone of voice was so different from her previous ones that even Mary seemed to be taken aback. That again? What about you, Judy? She asks me this since Anna said no. And I answer back to her. So, what you're saying is that you want us daughter-in-laws to live with you because you want us to take care of you, is that right? Well, that's one thing, but I'm also lonely now and I'd rather live with either Phil or Jack. Since both Anna and I kept on saying no to her request, Mary seemed to be getting more and more irritated. Are you really saying that you both can't obey to your own mother-in-law's request? Well, this is an order. I'm going to live with my son, so you have to live with me. Then, Anna and I both looked at each other and nodded. I will not. How about this person instead? I then spread out some photos on the table. Th that's Phil and Jack began to panic. Because those photos were evidence that both Phil and Jack were having an affair. The photos were of them entering a hotel with a woman, kissing in the park, and so on. You two were both cheating on us. You two are really close brothers, huh? And I heard that Mary also knew about this? Even though Mary knew about it, she was helping you to create alibis. 
How could she be so shameless as to ask us to live with her and take care of her while doing such a despicable thing? Anna was also nodding her head beside me. If you want somebody to take care of you, Mary, then ask these women in the photos. We are both getting divorced, so I will not live or take care of you. You're causing so much troubles here, Mary panicked. Troubles? Well, we don't feel like we're in trouble at all. Right, Anna? Anna smiled. Hey, Anna! If you divorce me then, you'll be the one who's in trouble. There's no way a housewife can make it all on her own. Phil started to yell. He might want to start imitating the sea lion again like he did a month ago, but we will not let him do that anymore. Divorce is just a threat. Anna then replied with a smile on her face. Oh, I'm not the one in trouble, you know. Because I'm planning to get alimony from you. What? I'm also going to charge the woman you cheated on me with for alimony, and I think it will at least cover the cost of renting a small apartment and getting my life back on track. I'll have to work hard to find a job, but... I also still plan to do everything I can to make it on my own. Oh, Anna, don't worry. I'll support and help you out. Anna and I both decided to cooperate and help each other get through this crappy situation. With my personal savings, we can manage to make a living for the time being. If Anna gets alimony from Phil and his partner, she will pay it back to me with a small amount of interest. And for this to work, we must do whatever it takes to get money from them. Oh, Jack, it's pretty obvious that I'll be asking for alimony from you too. And also from the woman you cheated on me with. Even though I'm working, there's never enough money for a 40-year-old divorcee. When I said this to Jack, he looked at me in despair. I'm s sorry It was just a desire. And it was just for fun. It wasn't anything serious. Serious or not, cheating is cheating. We have already consulted this to our lawyer, so you can make excuses all you want to our lawyer. I gave Jack and Phil the business card of our lawyer's office. The lawyer represented both Anna and I. We signed up for two lawyers at the same time and got a small discount for a lawyer to be on both our cases. This was a very good deal for both Anna and I. It's also known as a clever housewife's trick. H hey, wait a minute. Let's talk about this. Just not divorce, please. I'll apologize. I'm sorry. Jack and Phil both got down on their knees and apologized on the spot, but Mary was just upset and started to scream. Well, if you both want a divorce, why don't you do it then? I'm not going to put up with you both who can't be patient enough about your own husband's one or two affairs. Anna then began to laugh. Before I knew it, Anna looked completely confident. After all, a woman gets stronger at the final moment. Mary, you can tolerate very well with affairs, huh? Is it because you know what it's like to have an affair? Hearing this, Mary was so shocked that she flinched. What? What are you talking about so suddenly? I heard that you had an affair too. I heard it from one of your neighbors. You had a fling with a part-time worker at Jack's swim club. What the hell is going on with your family DNA? Compared to you all, father-in-law was so serious. H who the hell told you that? Well, I wonder who could it be? Why don't you ask around if you're curious? Well then, we're going back to pack our bags, so we'll be going now. Anna and I stood up at the same time. And then, I said this with a huge smile on my face. Please just enjoy and continue on imitating the sea lion you did previously. After that, Anna and I went back to our own houses and left with the luggage we had packed in advance. We had already signed a contract for an apartment, so we would meet there. Jack called me and Phil called Anna several times, but we ignored all of them and left everything to our lawyer. 
After a while, both our divorce got settled and we finally got our alimony. Mary's intention to have her daughter-in-laws take care of her stopped since then, and she started to rely on her two sons. And now, it seems that there's a dispute between Phil and Jack about who was going to take care of her. Please come home, I'm really sorry. Let's start over again. I'll wait for you forever at that restaurant where we used to go for our dates. Phil and Jack kept on sending us messages to get back together again. We would mock about Phil and Jack at night after work over a light drink while reading their stupid messages. Hey Anna, where is that restaurant which Phil mentioned? Oh, I don't really know what he's talking about. I'm pretty sure the restaurant where we used to go on dates is gone now, so I have no clue what he's talking about. Anna and I lived together for a little while, but when Anna got a job, she moved out of the apartment. She and I are now best friends who ran away from that horrible family together. We would like to continue to support and cooperate with each other. I'm now leading a very laid-back life, drinking coffee while petting my cat. My name is Katie, and I'm 37 years old. I married my husband, Steve, last year, and we bought a house together. Steve is 10 years younger than me. To be honest, I never dreamed that I would marry someone 10 years younger than me. When we started dating, I thought we would eventually break up, but before I knew it, we had quickly reached to marriage. Even when he proposed to me, I was the one who asked him if he was really okay to be married with me. But then, Steve replies with, I'll definitely protect you, Katie, so please marry me. I thought to myself how lucky I was to be with someone so kind and gentle. However, our newlywed life was not all lovey-dovey and didn't get to have much time alone with just the two of us. Steve's mother, Lily, completely went against our marriage and made a fuss saying, my own son Steve is going to leave me, his own mother, and choose that woman, that devilish woman. Lily was not at all pleased with the fact that I was 10 years older than Steve. I thought to myself that it's no surprise that she opposes me, given Steve and I's age difference. And then Lily gave me a condition in exchange for her approval of our marriage. She demands by saying, you must live with me. I thought it was a bit too far-fetched, but Lily would not allow us to get married at all unless we obeyed her request, so we agreed. Besides, Steve at that time couldn't really ignore his mother like that. You know, my mother raised me all on her own, right? So I felt like I had to return the favor. Lily had raised Steve all alone as a single mother. Steve was grateful for that and wanted to repay by taking care of her. As for me, I couldn't really do anything to get in the way between Lily and Steve's bond, so we decided to live together. I wanted Lily to see the two of us, Steve and I, as a normal married couple and to gain her approval. We decided to live together in a house that we had purchased as our new home. We hoped that this would improve our relationship with Lily, but oh yes, we were very much mistaken. Katie, can't you even do your housework properly? What in the world have you learned at your age? This is why I hate women who are older than Steve. Lily's bullying only got worse. Like Steve, I worked overtime and often came home late, leaving me with little time to take care of the housework. With all due respect, Lily, I work just like Steve does. So please understand that I can't do everything perfectly. That's what I would say to argue back, but... You instantly disobey people who are older than you, huh? What a bossy wife you are! Hearing what she said, it looks like she gets more fired up and bullies me even more once I argue back to her. Steve, seeing all of this, says, Mother, stop talking to Katie like that. He always defended me. To that, Lily looks shocked and says, Well, Steve, honey, you weren't like this before. It's all Katie's fault that you started rebelling against your own mother. While saying this, she would wipe her tears with a tissue. 
and then she would give me this very cold, angry glare. This is all your fault. I don't know why Steve got married to a woman like you. This would happen every single time. Wow, I really can't believe that I'm kind of living a life of the one that you'd see in soap operas, where wives get picked on by their mother-in-laws. I guess Lily is frustrated that her beloved Steve was taken away by a wife who's way older than him, and also she just enjoys bullying me like it's her hobby. Day by day, Lily has turned into a very spoiled person and she was going out of control. I had to take care after her grandmother before I had any experience in taking care of a baby, and I was having a hard time with it. Katie, I'm sorry about this. It's okay. Thank you for always being there for me. I actually feel really bad for Steve. His own mother hated and kept on bullying who he loves. Steve, who loves me very much, has tried many times to get her to move out, but I couldn't agree to his idea. I kind of felt sorry for Lily, even though she was like that. I believe that if I just put up with it, Lily would one day understand and maybe change for the better. That's what I believed. But Lily's verbal abuse towards me didn't stop. On the first New Year's Day after our marriage, we gathered at a relative's house. Lily, who usually never left the house, was so happy to see and talk with people as she was in an excited mood. Every day, Katie makes excuses that she has work but in reality, she doesn't do anything at all. And she leaves all the housework to me. Can you believe that? If she did that during our generation, that would be unacceptable, right? I really don't know where she got her common sense. Lily was talking about me to all my relatives over drinks. She talked bad things about me even here. If it was only within our family, I'd be okay as I'm used to it. But now I was getting angry by the minute. Lily's voice was so loud that her conversation which was held in the hall even reached me in the kitchen. One of my husband's relatives, Lisa, who was with me, says, Katie, it looks like you're having a hard time, aren't you? She called out to me, looking worried. Oh, yes, well, I'm managing somehow. Living with Lily is not a comforting experience, isn't it? Especially with Lily being like that. Well, actually, you're right. Without thinking, I let out my true feelings. Why don't you talk to Helen about it? Helen is Steve's aunt and Lily's sister. She's an older sister and she has always been kind and reliable. But would she even listen to me complaining about her own sister? While I was thinking that to myself, Katie! I heard a very loud voice echoing through the kitchen. Oh, Lily, what's wrong now? You always make me keep asking you to bring me more drinks because we're out of it. Sorry, I'll bring it out now. I sighed and hurriedly brought the beer. Lily was in the middle of chatting with her relatives and looked a little bit drunk. As I brought a cold bottle of beer and a new glass, Lily snatched it away from me and says, Katie, you really are a clumsy wife, aren't you? She says as she glares at me. Why the hell would she say that? As I was thinking this, Lily poured the beer into the glass for a relative who was sitting next to her. It's common sense to pour drinks into empty glasses, isn't it? This is what you always lack, Katie. You're really a useless person with a bad upbringing. Lily's words made everyone around look a little uncomfortable, but she didn't care. I felt that if I got angry at Lily at this point, this would put me in the same fighting ring as Lily, so I just casually decided to laugh it off. That's my mother-in-law. She really knows her way around drinks. I learn a lot from you, Lily. My usual business smile came in handy. Lily was also smiling with a huge grin on her face, thinking as if what she did was amazing. It seems like she's satisfied now. Katie, are you alright? It was Lily's sister, Helen, who spoke to me, all worried, looking at how exhausted I was. 
I'm really sorry about my sister. It's always so difficult to deal with her, isn't it? Oh, uh, no. I denied it, but to be honest, I was so fed up with Lily that I couldn't manage to lie that well in front of Helen. Living together with Lily, is it difficult? Yes, it actually is. Lily doesn't seem to like me at all. I sighed and complained to Helen about my problems with Lily. Helen had listened to every word I said and finally says, If you have any problems, you can always talk to me. I was moved by her kind and reassuring words, as if she was like my real mother. Yes, I have a kind ally who will help me when I'm really in trouble. I felt a little better and like this, I was able to go on with the New Year's holiday. Thank you and I'm sorry for what happened, Katie. I'm sorry about all the things my mother has said to you. Oh, it's okay. Lily was drunk and because of that, I'm sure she just got carried away. I tried to think so, but I was too naive. Lily's verbal abuse towards me, who didn't try to argue back to her, escalated even more. Steve's relatives likes to hold family events and they usually get together whenever they have the chance. I was sent out forcefully by Lily to help out every single time. Steve tells me that I didn't have to come if I was busy, but Lily would always force me to go. And every time, I would receive verbal abuse from Lily. Katie, don't get all carried away just because you have a job. A wife should always stand three steps behind her husband and quietly watch over him. You think you're unequal with Steve, but he's a better man than you. You don't understand anything. She was verbally abusing me publicly in front of my relatives again. What's so wrong of me working at my job? What's so wrong being in the same position as my husband? Steve tried repeatedly to warn Lily, but I felt very awkward about being everyone's attention on this lively drinking party. All I could do was just sit in silence and listen to Lily's terrible words. Then one day, Lily said something so horrible which made me decided that I could no longer live with her. It was at a family gathering as usual, and Lily, as usual, would be verbally abusive to me to make her feel better. What in the world does my son like about Katie? I really shouldn't have allowed him to marry her. Lily drinks with the relatives while saying such things. She can't even get pregnant, so what's the point of them getting married? Don't you think so? Lily says in a snarly voice, as if she's asking the people around her to agree with her. I felt the air freeze at her words. Steve's hand holding the glass began to shake, and I dropped the tray which I was holding on the floor. What did you just say, mother? Steve asked in a low voice, as if trying to suppress his anger. What do you mean? I only said if she can't get pregnant, what's the point of you and Katie's marriage? I mean, aren't I right? Marriage at 37 means that she's given up on getting pregnant, right? That's why I was against the marriage, but you wouldn't listen to me. It's too late to regret anything. I wonder if Lily really understood the actual meaning of what she was saying. Steve and I definitely wanted kids. Indeed, I'm almost 40, so my chances of getting pregnant are slim. Still, I wanted his child and had just started going through fertility treatments. I didn't tell Lily a word about this. I knew that if I told her, she would criticize me again. Hey, Katie. Let's make this clear once and for all. If you don't want to have kids, then get divorced already. Steve is still young, so he can start over as much as he wants. Okay? At that moment, something inside me had snapped. The wiring that I had worked so hard to endure all this time had snapped with the words kids and divorce. You really hate me, don't you, Lily? Yes, I do hate you. I hate you so much. Lily looks at me smiling as she says that. 
Okay, then, well, just now, we are no longer living together anymore. Could you please leave my house, Lily? What are you talking about? You're crazy. You joke too much in front of all my relatives, and it's ridiculous. I'm sorry, but I'm not joking at all. You cannot stay in our house any longer, I declared firmly. Obviously, sensing a change in the atmosphere, all the relatives instantly moved away from us. Hey, what are you talking about? Well, if you hate me so much, then why are you living in our house? You have no right to demand me to leave. Oh, yes, I do. That house is mine. It is up to me whether I let you live there or kick you out, Lily. Lily looks really shocked. Wait a minute, Steve. What's the meaning of all this? Lily asks Steve for help. Mom, I told you many times, didn't I? Don't make fun of Katie too much. Steve responded coldly. I told you that Katie built that house by herself, didn't I? Why can't you even remember something so important? Because normally, it should be the husband who builds the house, right? Lily would always think that the husbands are the ones who built houses to provide for their family. Steve just sighed and continued. And I was against moving in with you, mother. But Katie insisted on having you live with us, so I had no choice. So that's enough. If you make fun of my wife anymore, even if you're my own mother, I will not allow it. Lily, with tears in her eyes, argues back. Excuse me? No way! You're kidding, right? Steve, aren't you on my side? Your side? I'm more like your enemy, mother. I can't believe that you're my own mother who verbally abuses my own beloved wife like this. Oh, Steve, why? Lily burst into tears and tried to hang on to Steve desperately, but it was already too late. Anyways, please pack your bags by the end of this week. As I said this, Lily looked at me with despair. No way! Katie, please, wait a minute. I apologize for everything I've done, so let's continue to live happily together, okay? She says as if nothing had happened. I can't do that. I can't live any longer with someone who doesn't have a shred of gratitude. No! I want to continue to spend time with you both, okay? Please stay away from me. And please get out of my house as soon as possible. I am the landlord here. I told her with no remorse. Mother, it is what it is, so get ready to leave. We won't help you. Lily had heard her son and his wife demand for her to leave the house all in front of her relatives. Only few people sympathized with her. It was because everyone knew what she had been saying this whole time. Katie, good job. Thank you. It was Steve's aunt, Helen, who approached us after. Actually, this whole idea was Helen's. We have to teach my sister a lesson. Katie, you did a good job. Steve, you have to protect your wife. Auntie, thank you for helping me save Katie. Helen and I had actually been in touch with each other frequently. When I couldn't stand Lily's abuse, I would always consult to Helen about it. Helen always supported me gently. But won't it be a trouble for you, Helen, from now on? It's okay. Don't you worry about such things. I will be monitoring Lily from now on. So you both should just think about living your lives first. Thank you so much. I really couldn't thank her enough. After that, I asked Lily to leave our house as planned. Helen was the one who strictly got angry at Lily, although she resisted to the very end. This is what you did to yourself. Why don't you reflect about all the things you've said that hurt people's feelings? Helen came over to pick Lily up, and that was how she left our house. Supposedly, Lily repeatedly went over to Helen and asked if Helen could also beg us to forgive Lily 
and to accept her back again. But to that, Helen yelled at Lily. That's enough! Think about how they feel and how they don't want anything to do with you anymore. Lily cried like a little child and said bitterly, That woman brainwashed my son and made him her own. After Lily was kicked out of our house, she began living alone. I don't know where she lives, but I don't need to know that anymore. And we also moved out of our home. In fact, Steve had just been transferred and I had just submitted my transfer request. The house was originally built with my parents' inheritance, so there was no mortgage and it was easy to sell it. We made some money after selling the house and this made life a little more comfortable. If Lily were to visit our previous home, she would surely feel lonely and hopeless. We knew this and chose to part ways. Katie, I'm home. Welcome home, honey. I greeted Steve at the door with my big stomach. I'm looking forward to our baby. I'm finally becoming a father. I'm counting on you, sweetie. Soon, we will be parents. Steve is determined to protect me, even if he has to cut ties off from his own mother. No matter what happens, we can get through it as a couple. I'm so glad that I married him. I believe that with all my heart.